Hi, I'm Jared Rapstone. Today I'm going to talk about flamenco and focus on a couple of areas that might really give you a broad sense of where flamenco's originated, what's been happening over the last century, and what's happening now in flamenco. Flamenco was formed through ancient threads of music, cultures, and people originating in Andalusia in the mid 18th century. The musical elements of flamenco came about through centuries of Arabic taksim, which are improvised scales over specific cadences. This was mixed with an already rich Andalusian folk music of southern Spain, which had been occupied by Greeks, Romans, and Visigoths, and uh, already had a, mi a real mixture of different cultures living in that region that had contributed to lots of different music happening at the time. The jota is also another uh, essential rhythmic and melodic point of reference in flamenco. It uh, also became a foundation for other Latin styles of music that made its way to the new world of uh, Spanish colonization in South America. Now, after the Catholic reconquest of Andalusia, after almost eight centuries of Muslim and Arabic rule, a uh, migration of Roma people from Pakistan arrived in the late 15th century and repopulated the eastern and southern parts of Spain. The communities that are most tied to the early flamenco include Roma, also known as Gitano, which is a celebrated term in many of the Roma communities of Spain. The other communities include the remaining Arabic inhabitants that were forced into Christian faith. To simplify, these groups of people were marginalized and often outcast from the rest of Spanish society. Many of the unconformists were forced into the Inquisition and later conscription to the New World imprisonment. Others had forced settlement from their previous uh, nomadic ways and a general inequality to the rest of society. And this lasted hundreds of years. The original meaning of flamenco as a term, it's, it's kind of hard to pin down, but generally some believe it's referred to as a person being wild or uh, kind of lunatic. But the expression of that temperament is also kind of felt today and it's also brought on through a similar uh, sense of the music, which is really to just drive yourself beyond to what you think you can achieve in performance and expression and really express the deepest of your emotions. So in the music, the singing expresses such emotions such as uh, suffering and heartache and also joy. When it talks about family and loved ones, it is often delivered through the lens of nostalgia as well. The people sharing or singing this music were so dispersed across Andalusia, specific song styles emerged from the, the various occupations or places that they were in, particularly songs of blacksmiths, miners, prisoners, and even field workers of particular regions such as Triara in Sevilla, and Jerez de Frontera, which is a small town in, in Cadiz where Sherry comes from, and other more centralized towns such as Granada and Cordoba and Huelva, as well as the southern coast town of Malaga. So fast forward to the mid 19th century where the entertainment industry was moving from Zazuelas, which were a popular Italian style theatre, into Cafe Cantante, or singing cafes. That these resembled more of a nightclub. It was here that people within the flamenco community now had an opportunity to become performers and move from the regional areas that work on the stage and potentially tour. Among these people were descendants of the Roman migrants and the remaining Arabic people who had converted to Christianity, as well as some Spanish people who had made their way into this group. Some of the biggest figures in this time include Silverio Franconetti, who started the most successful Café Cantante. By the late 1880s, this was in full flight, Spanish middle class coming to see the deep song, 
And other artists of this era include uh, Manuel Torre, famous blacksmith, Gitano, and Antonio Chacon, who is a non-Roma singer, but a real lover of all of the different forms of singing. So even though he may not have been, um, due to his style of voice, which was very clear, um, and less raspy as, say, Manuel Torre, his love of all of the different singing made him probably one of the most well-established and uh, more of the authorities on singing of the time. So I've got a few versions of their, their singing that I'll play for you now. Ole, Milito! <laughs> The fascination that we have with flamenco often comes with the performer's ability to express the deepest of human emotion. And from the Café Cantante, we can really see the beginnings of that expression through guitar and dance, as well as the singing. More elements of Andalusian folk music were also introduced, such as Fandango and Malagueña, particularly by Antonio Chacon. The Bull Ring was also a prominent performance space where flamenco's performed. Here's a brief recording of La Niña de los Peñas performing a solía. Thank <laughs> you. 
So by 1910, the industry had collapsed and had moved toward a more pseudo flamenco style, which is kind of a watered down. This is not to say that flamenco didn't still exist. It just meant more underground for what we've currently been really working with. So people like Carmen Amaya, who was one of the biggest artists in the early 20th century, she ended up moving to uh, to South America and to Argentina and performing there for a while, especially through the Civil War. And we saw a lot of flamenco artists at, at that time sort of move away from Spain. In 1922, we saw the first attempts to recover flamenco, led by a composer, Manuel da Falla, and poet Federico Garcia Lorca. And they presented the first Concurso de Cante Hondo, which is essentially a singing competition. This event aim to bring back the old styles of singing that seeks an air of purity, I guess, in the music, towards preserving the rhythm and the cadences in the singing. One of the greatest figures of this time, uh, I mentioned her, Carmen Amaya. She was the highest paid dancer in the world at this time and she was successful in touring to many, many countries around the world and she really brought flamenco around the globe for the time. And it was a very heavily set aesthetic of flamenco that she brought. She was born in Barcelona, but in interviews, she'd often pretend to say that she came from Granada, from a famous community there. It's almost like her being the greatest dancer wasn't enough that she had to pretend that she wasn't even from Barcelona. So some really wild stories come of this time of, um, identity and how it's been been treated and today it's it's just wonderful that we celebrate every artist from wherever they are. Her guitarist also not from Andalusia, he was from Pamplona in the north, Sabicas, who ended up being one of the greatest flamencos of all time. So her performance repertoire included flamenco styles such as Alegrías and Soleá and Tientos, but also um, included classical works of Granados and Albanus and really brought that, uh, the essence of what she thought was Spanish music to the world. And so there's a lot of interest in the qualities of, of composition that filtered into flamenco at an early point in this, I guess, in this new staging of flamenco performances. And um, she even created her, her own style of uh, flamenco song called a, a taranto, which is a combination of taranta and tangos. So we'll go into some of these styles a little more detailed. Um, you can hear uh, for the music students out there, the, um, the tonality of taranto means, or taranta is in F sharp Phrygian, which is a really beautiful, um, tonality in B minor. Play a little bit. So what she's doing is taking that tonality and putting it into a tangos, which is in 4-4. Four, four. So one of the greatest resources that we have in flamenco is filmed live performances and documentaries about it. And one of the first established references is the Rito y Geografia de Cante, which was filmed in 1971 to 1973. So what is happening now in this last part is expressing the old renewed. So new flamenco really uh, 
really respects the history and and often pays tribute to specific artists, places, and certain certain uh, stylistic qualities that have been brought brought up throughout the, the different generations. So by the end of the 1970s, Spain had significantly shifted politically with the death of General Franco into a more hopeful future for the country and autonomy of its regions. This impacted flamenco music as more modern music was now allowed into the country. Of our modern flamenco artists, one of our most important figures includes Baca Lucia. He is considered as the greatest of all guitarists of all time, especially in flamenco. But he is responsible for reshaping how we see modern flamenco. He was successful in recording his own music and the interpretations of all the different flamenco forms from accompanying the voice and the dance. He also um, did wonderful interpretations of music from the New World, from Central America and South America as well. He also attributed music to the most important figures of Spain, including uh, Manuel de Falla with his interpretations of his works, as well as Federico Garcia Lorca. His recording of Rodrigo's guitar concerto is also one of the most celebrated that we have. Now, I guess from a, the point of view of honoring history, Paco really showed us that um, through his song titles even, because he's, he's he did sing a little bit on his albums, but not very often. His song titles uh, often attributed specific people of influence. For instance, um, Recuero Apatino references a legendary guitarist from the Cafe Cantante. Uh, Gloria Anino Recado is also a tribute to one of his first uh, mentors that really paved the way for his, his early foundations of flamenco. Even the great piece Ziriab which references the 9th century wood player who came from Baghdad to Granada in 788 to begin a school of music there. Now, a complete reflection, you could say, is um, throughout his life is also in his music. So the places and people that founded all of his influences have been brought into the way that we can now reflect on the sounds of his music. He introduced new instruments to flamenco as well, including the cajon, the bass, the piano, violin, and even the harmonica. Flamenco harmonica, yeah. So the singer, Carmen Cameron del Isla, is another significant artist who took great inspiration for Federico Garcia Lorca in his album, Leyenda del Tiempo. He took the poetry and put it into flamenco, essentially. Other really significant singers of the time that did this was Enrique Morente and more recently guitarist Paco Heredia Torres who took the piano melodies of Lorca and reharmonized the music. Now even Lorca, all of the significance around the, the music of his, they became, uh, I guess his, his melodies were taken from Andalusian folk music and repurposed into his own arrangements. This was a real trend of his time that was influenced by his friend, um, Manuel de Falla, and one of their teachers, uh, Felipe Pedrel, the great composer. So there is a great sense of nostalgia, but not from a place that wants to just copy someone else's creation, but to celebrate it through renewing it, quoting from it, or touching its surface, just to, just to acknowledge its history. So modern bands that have also sprung up in flamenco include Ketama, which are from the, a famous Granada family. Other, other famous family groups include the Gypsy Kings from France and Ojos de Brujo from Barcelona. Now, they're quite comfortable, all of these groups mixing flamenco with rock, Latin and other popular musics from around the world. So lastly on that, what you can constantly see is that there are people that want to celebrate the history of flamenco and give it respect from a renewed perspective. Here, all the artists compose their own music. Expression is valued over perfectionism. It is more a contemporary style, therefore. 
that emulates the harmony of the voice and the rhythms of the dance to find its real truth. And from that perspective alone, there is so much creative potential. <laughs>